Good evening, gentlemen. Today is the video you've been waiting for, the missile tutorial. Now, this isn't just a normal block-by-block -block tutorial like most of the other ones you'll see on YouTube. I'm going to give you much, much more than that. Specifically, how to use the missile to maximize the effectiveness, as well as tips and tricks for making your own missiles and making your own missiles that you already have better. Also, as a side note, this is not my best missile. This is like the first one I made. Um, and I made it that way on purpose so you can learn how to improve and innovate yourself. Because in the end, like the old saying, teach a man to make a missile, he gets a missile. Teach a man how missiles work, and he can challenge communism. So with that being said, let's get into the actual building portion. All right, so getting right into it here, first thing you're going to need is gyros in the movement section, obviously. You're going to need two for pitch, two for yaw, and one for roll. Um, and we're going to try to maximize the efficiency of this thing, so we're going to make it lightweight, um, so just be ready for that. Um, space thrusters, they're the most bang for your buck out there. They're really small, and they provide pretty darn good thrust. So, almost for all your missiles, you're going to want to use space thrusters in this kind of back-to-back -back formation. Um, grid blocks, again, to maximize weight. You're only going to want to place one there because there's the logic gate going to go right next to it, um, which we'll do right now. This is a voiceover, by the way. You're going to want an OR logic gate, not any of the other ones, the OR logic gate. Um, and you're going to make sure that it is facing the thruster so it doesn't interfere with any connection points. Speaking of connection points, flat connectors, they're also going to be your best friend for making missiles, especially ones that you want to be really small. I advise this like tic-tac pattern where you're going side by side and it's alternating from the top to the bottom. That's probably going to be the most structurally sound way you can do it. Um, now, you're going to want a quantum rudder, um, and here I am kind of struggling to find it because I'm terrible. It should be on the lift section to be fair, but whatever. So you're going to want to hook it up just like that, again with the tic-tac pattern, maximizing weight, and you're going to want to put the turn rate down to 0.1 and the strength all the way up. Um, and I'll tell you why later, probably. If I don't, that's okay. You don't really need to know. So now, you need hinges. Um, obviously, we're going to do four on the front like this. And then we're going to do, um, I think it's eight all the way around on the sides, um, which is a lot. But trust me, it's worth it. Um, because we're going to have eight distance sensors and not, um, not four or anything. So you're going to want the yaw and pitch gyros all the way up to 10, and the roll gyro at about 7. You can do like 6.5 or 7 here. I haven't tested it yet, so I did 6.2, but you're going to put it at 7. Um, and also, if you want, you can bind up the gyros to a better uh, buttons for when you put it on a plane, so you don't have to worry about that later. This is the best chance you'll get for that, so I recommend doing that now, while all the gyros are exposed. Now you'll need distance sensors, obviously. Um, you're going to want to put the sensor offset all the way to 80, um, and you're going to want to make sure the red dot is not going to interfere with the other sensors that's going to be right in front of it. So the, the tracking will pretty much go right past the sensors that are on the front of the missile. So it's, it's a very compact system that can pretty much improve your missile a lot with that extra four sensors. So now you're going to want to put the front distance sensors in that pattern right there so they don't stick to each other. Pretty obvious, but if you don't know, then very, very smart little system some guy made. I don't know who made it like that, but they're pretty smart. Anyways, a thousand meter distance only detect blocks. Very important right there. Um, and then you're going to want to go down to the uh, gimbals, not gyros, um, and just place two of them like that. These are pretty useful for slow speed stuff, so if the missile gets too slow, then it doesn't fall out of the sky, it stays right behind the target. 
Um, and right now I'm struggling to find the blocks to connect it because I'm very smart, as you can see. And here I decide to put the dynamite facing the gyros. And I'm... not the gyros. Yeah, facing the gyros. What am I saying? Facing the gyros, away from the gimbals, and the gimbals should still not be connected. And here, I finally figure out what block I'm looking for. The, uh, what is that even called? The L bracket or something? I don't know. But you're gonna want to put them at 6. One of them at 6, one of them at 5. I figure that out later. Um, so yeah. They're going to be different because we want to balance the missile as good as possible. And we're also going to want a distance sensor right there with the red dot not in the way of the hinge. You want it on that side. Um, and you want to make sure that the distance is about 1.6. I think it's 1.6. Only detect blocks 1.6 and hooked up into the dynamite. I think here I put it at 1.5, but you're going to want it at 1.6 hooked up into the dynamite. Um, and all of the distance sensors are going to be on trigger, so you don't have to worry about that. Some people put them on measurement, but that's really only good for long range missiles. This is going to be a close range one. You can fix it up however you'd like later, but this is pretty much going to be the gist of the missile right here. This is most of the framework already done. We're going to put another piece of dynamite there, because I realized it can take it. It's a pretty small little missile, um, not a crazy amount of power, so it should be okay without that. And then I deleted that right there, so you have more connection points for the detachable blocks. Um, you can hook them up to the plane or whatever plane you want, just make sure that the distance sensors don't detect the plane, and if you do, well, you can hook up a system to make it not move the missile. Um, anyways, back into the hinges, this is a very important part, pay attention. You're going to want to unbind all of the left-right stuff, um, and for the back sensors, or the back hinges, you're going to want the angle on 80, very important, 80 degrees, steering help all the way down, strength strength to 200, hold position, and speed all the way up to 2. That is, this is going to be the most critical part of the whole missile. Um, and for the front sensors, same thing, speed 2, steering help 0, hold position, strength 200, but the angle this time is going to be 75.5. Um, you can mess with these later. But these are going to be one of the best two angles for this kind of missile. Um, now you're going to hook the hinges up to the... Hold on, pause really quick. I forgot to hook up the back set, the back, whoa, the back set of hinges. Um, do not forget, hook up all your hinges the first time around, so you don't have to uh, remember it later. Hook up the gimbals, the thrusters, and all the hinges, and the roll gyro, which I also forgot. Um, hook up the roll gyro to that as well. Um, can you tell it's the first time I've been doing a voiceover? I, I'm pretty bad at it, but I'll get there. So now you're going to want a speed sensor, very important. You're going to want the speed sensor on 200 miles per hour, going into all the thrusters, with a negative output. So you're going to want 200 miles per hour, negative output, just going into all the thrusters. We'll, we'll change this later, um, but for right now, this is testing. So we're gonna want it a little bit slower than normal. 200 miles per hour. Um, and yeah, now I'm realizing that I didn't hook it up into the gyro, but I still didn't hook it up into the hinges. I'm so smart, guys. Um, shout out to Spider-Man Keller, if you're watching this, if you're in a video. Um, I'm sorry for banning you from the server, but I, uh, you're causing like, I'm on a PlayStation 4 Slim. I'm struggling over here. Um, so now I'm just putting it onto a plane, and we can skip most of this right here. And just like that, it's hooked up to the plane properly. Um, except here I forgot to press X on the detachable block, so make sure you do that, or whatever your fire button is going to be. Next thing I'm going to do is hook up the pitch distance sensors up to the pitch gyros. Um, this is a very 
important part to pay pet whoa to pay attention to um, because if you don't have this hooked up correctly then the whole thing pretty much just won't work so make sure you have your gyros and your distance sensors hooked up the same way I do make sure these ones have negative and you can leave the other ones as positive now for the yaw gyros um, just hook them up like the other ones but again pay attention to make sure that the negative ones are negative and the positive ones are positive because when the missile sees something to the left we want it to turn to the left so let's make the distance sensors that are facing to the left give a negative output easy as that um, now after that I'm going to delete the bind on the dynamite but I forgot the other piece of dynamite that I forgot to add so that's just perfect um, I'm just removing all the bindings pretty much I'm gonna leave the thrusters um, but the hinges are very important make sure you delete the bindings on those that is by far the most important bind to delete um, and yeah now it's time to test it all right we're testing it right now um, very important thing to note, which we'll get into a lot more later, aiming the missile is the most important part of the whole process, because if you don't point the missile directly at the target, or a little bit in front of the target, it's going to miss, pretty much. Um, the missile will do the rest after it sees the plane, but you have to make sure that the missile sees the plane in the first place, so it can follow it. Um, in a second here, you'll see an example of me firing it poorly. Um, and the missile losing track because of it. It's not the missile's fault, it's just I fired it wrong. So as you can see there, it's a little bit too far away and a little bit too off to the side for the missile. It tries right there, you can see it tried to curve, but then it loses tracking completely. So you're going to want to aim directly at the target, a little bit above, a little bit below, but directly at it. Now you can see the top down of the missile curving and doing its job until impact. Now right here, you're also going to see the uh, problem I told you about earlier, how the distance sensors for the detonator are just a little bit too short. If you followed the voiceover, then you should have that fixed. Alright, now on to the other part of the tutorial. Now if you did everything right, this is what you should have just made. Not the best, not the worst. But if it doesn't work properly, make sure to double check all the connections of the distance sensors to the gyros. Now I will remind you, this missile was made to be improved. If you like it just the way it is, then cool, you're welcome to keep it that way. But if you want something better, that's what this is here for. Now just know every block that you change will affect every single part of the missile, even if it doesn't seem like it. Now on to how to properly use it. This is a very important part of using a new missile, so pay attention. Your missile will not do everything for you, you still have to make sure that it knows where it's going. A common mistake is firing too close or too far or too off to the side. What you want is a little bit in front of the target or right on it, like I said earlier. Then you can pull the trigger and it will do the rest. However, there's more. Firing while the target is coming at you is very tricky, especially if you don't have the best angle. The real tricky bit is getting the missile to see target at all from the front. It's always good to remember, the faster the missile is going, uh, the lower the chances are that the missile will even see the target. Remember, everything you do will either increase or decrease the chance of hitting the target. There are no guaranteed misses or no guaranteed hits, no matter how good your missile is or how bad it is. Now here I have a diagram of what I was talking about earlier. The bottom picture is a picture of the missile coming on the plane from the front. The closing speed of the missile, plus the speed of the plane, makes a higher overall closing speed. This means the sensors won't have time to detect and track the target properly. Now if you look to the top side of this diagram, this is a photo of the plane going away from the target. Now this one is the missile speed minus the speed of the plane, makes for an overall slower closing speed, giving the missile more time to actually do its job. Complicated, I know. But it's worth knowing to make sure you can properly force feed your opponent your long stick. Right here I have a video showing you what I'm talking about with the closing speed stuff. As you can see, the missile detects the target, but it doesn't actually track it. And from the rear, as you can see, it's tracking perfectly fine. 
This is a very important thing to keep in mind while you are firing and using your missile. Well, there you have it. This is a pretty simple missile. It's just not too hard to make. You can improve it however you'd like, but hey, this is the missile. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you use it. Don't spam it, please. Don't spam it. I beg. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. See you.